checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. And the real stuff is AEW Dynamite last night from the Utilita Arena in Cardiff, Wales. Utilita. Thankfully, I heard uh, Excalibur say that first because it was... I, I was going to have some problems with that one. Words. Words I have issues with. Thank God I'm on the radio. Uh, some of you have issues with geography. Wales is not England. Scotland is not England. England is England. Together, along with Northern Ireland, they compose the United Kingdom. And Chris Jericho kept saying Cardiff, England, yesterday as a as a joke. But many of you wrote it or said it somewhere online yesterday. No, don't do that to everybody, okay? Separate people, Joe Calzaghe will kick your ass. But in the first segment of the show, well, actually in the final segment of the show, because that's what this show was. It was three big storyline segments and four matches. That's pretty much everything that took place on Dynamite last night with everything barreling towards all in this coming Sunday. The final segment of the show AEW World Champion Swerve Strickland was interviewed by Nigel McGuinness in the middle of the ring so Swerve could tell everyone how he was going to beat the brakes off of Brian Danielson and break him down to the bone gristle. Said he's going to beat the man so badly that if Danielson didn't already say he was going to retire, he would have to retire. And if Danielson ever got the itch to come back, whether it be at an indie show Swerve was going to be there. If he decided to put on a mask, go to Arena Mexico, Swerve would be waiting in the street, waiting on Brian to show up. And, in fact, if Danielson even thought, even thought about sitting down with his wife and his daughter to talk about returning, he may even be there too. And that was the trigger point for Brian Danielson. Came flying out of the locker room, ducked a Swerve punch, hit him with the Busaku knee, then cut the best promo that he has cut in forever, all fired up. He reminded everyone, including the locker room, that a lot of people may say that they're the best wrestler in the world, but he actually is the best wrestler in the world, said it in a way that you would believe that he knows he was the best wrestler in the world, and he's been so for the last 20 years. So, Tom... Brian and I, Dave, a lot of people have had some issues with how this thing has been built up and how Brian Danielson has been portrayed in it, how he has portrayed himself. But last night, if that's all you saw going off the air, that was a hell of a promo. And I'm as fired up now to see this match because of what these two have said to each other last night than I have been through the entire build. Yeah, I thought it was fantastic. Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson, whatever his name is, the American Dragon. You know who I'm talking about. The best wrestler in the world. I'm not even going to argue with him after that promo last night. And, yeah, I can't wait to see that match. On a, on a show that I'm sure is going to have a number of very good matches, I think that one's going to stand out in the end. You've been in a locker room with Swerve several times, right? Beat his beat his brakes off in MLW if I re, if I recall correctly, right? That's right, brother. Why is he? Uh, have you ever asked him, or has anybody ever asked him in the locker room why he wears so much smoky eye makeup? Well, he didn't look like that all the time. Okay. Just and once I see some, that. once I see a guy put on smoky eye makeup, I stop talking to him. <laughs> you, you don't talk to the mirror, then, do you? Never mind. An AEW World Championship run could be in the cards for Darby Allen, and I'm taking this side road here, Tom, for a reason, and that is because up on the front page of the site, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave didn't think he was going to do one this week. He, there is one up on the, uh, on the site right now. He mentions in it that AEW has seriously discussed Allen getting a run with the World Championship, though it's not clear when that would happen. Allen already has a title shot set up at Dynamite Grand Slam on September 25th because he won the Royal Rampage Battle Royal on July 27th. Meltzer wrote, quote, We've heard talk of Allen getting a run as champion no matter who wins on Sunday. We know that it's been talked about seriously, but as to when, that's less clear. Allen also has a title match uh, scheduled for All In. He's going to be challenging Jack Perry for the TNT title in a coffin match, and... 
you know, I take this sidebar here, Tom, just because, okay, with this being said, and a lot of people have been talking about this, not just, you know, and surely in Dave's circles and, and plenty of others, a lot of people believe that Darby Allen's going to get his hands on the title. What do you think the ultimate result of the title match between Swerve and Danielson is going to be at Wembley? And then what do you then think that champion is going to end up doing on September 25th at Grand Slam? Against Darby. I oh, I think Daniel Bryan wins that match. I think uh I think Darby loses to Jack Perry and gets screwed somehow in this coffin match. And then I think he also loses to whoever's the champion at Arthur Ashe or whatever it is. Let me throw a scenario it's too, at you. It is you. too early for well, no, go ahead. Unfortunately, though, we've heard all this stuff about Brian Danielson not being full time, not being under contract, a lot of this and a lot of that. And October 12th, they're in Tacoma at, for Wrestle Dream. Adam Cole, excuse me, Adam Cole, Adam Page, probably to me, he seems like the odds on favorite to win the casino gauntlet match that's going to be taking place and then he will have a stake probably for the title there too which maybe you can do that at grand slam somehow insert somebody else there where you can then wait on brian danielson to have the match with darby allen do that in tacoma and have darby win i know people will be pissed about that but then it takes you to the end of the year where Okay, Jack Perry has got to win over Darby. Darby's the champion. MJF is going to want that title back because at some point he's going to be done with Osprey. And if you wanted to, you could bring back Sammy Guevara and you could begin 2025 with your pillars fighting over the world championship. Am I overthinking that maybe? Or how about just this maybe? What are the odds that we're getting Brian Danielson and Darby Allen on October 12th for the title, no matter what happens on the 25th? That's what I would lean towards, you know. Perhaps it's even as simple as Jack Perry beating Darby Allen here in this coffin match. He's gone. We don't know where he is. Jack Perry's the one that faces Danielson for the title at Arthur Ashe because, hey, he beat the guy that's supposed to get the title shot anyways. Darby Allen comes back there, screws Jack Perry. It's interesting. They can wrestle they, at Wrestle Dream. They have options there. And, you know, especially leading into the end of the year, World's End in Orlando, which is now being counter-programmed by WWE, at some point, Adam Cole is going to be back, you would figure. You know, you have not heard hide or hair from him. He was on TV. Are, are we sure, really, at this point? I don't know that we can count on Adam Cole recovering. It's been a long time. It's been a, it's been a very long time. And, you know, I know Samoa Joe is out there filming movies and doing his thing. At some point, Samoa Joe is going to be back, I would assume, by the beginning of 2025, if nothing else. So they actually have some interesting options there when it comes to his title picture and not the, not even bringing in people like Osprey and Takeshita and some others as well. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, 
Full access to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.